Hi friends, in this video we are going to deal with the important judgment titled Attorney General for India vs. Satish and Anadha pronounced on 18th November 2021. This judgment deals with that the Supreme Court has observed that the main ingredient of the offense of sexual assault under section 7 of the POCSO Act was sexual intent and not skin to skin contact while reversing the controversial Bombay High Court's judgment in a POCSO case. To know more about this case synopsis, please watch the video fully. The facts of the case would be that the accused were convicted and sentenced for the offences under provisions of IPC and POCSO Act. Being aggrieved, the accused preferred appeals before Bombay High Court, for which the High Court has held that since there was no skin-to-skin -skin contact between the offender and the victim, it would not be a sexual assault under Section 7 of the POCSO Act and thus acquitted the accused for offence under POCSO Act. However, the High Court convicted the accused for the offence under IPC. The said observations made by the High Court have caused the Attorney General and the State of Maharashtra to file appeals before the Supreme Court. The accused has also filed the appeal challenging conviction for offences under IPC. The Attorney General expressing grave concern about the manner in which the provisions of POCSO Act were interpreted by the High Court vehemently submitted that such interpretation would lead to devastating effect in the society at large. The High Court could not have acquitted the accused in misinterpreting the provisions contained in Section 7 of POCSO Act on the ground that there was no direct physical contact, that is, skin-to-skin -skin contact made by the accused with the victim. He submitted that all the alleged acts of the accused were the acts amounting to sexual assault within the meaning of Section 7, punishable under Section 8 of the POCSO Act. The Supreme Court has held that the main controversy centers around the interpretation of Section 7 of the POCSO Act. While interpreting a statute, the court should strive to ascertain the intention of the legislature enacting it, and it is the duty of the courts to accept an interpretation or construction which promotes the object of the legislation and prevents its possible abuse. The POCSO Act intended to enforce the rights of all children to safety, security and protection from sexual abuse and exploitation and also intended to define explicitly the offences against children countered through commensurate penalties as an effective deterrence. Since the Act does not define touch or physical contact, the dictionary meanings were referred. Act of touch, if done with sexual intent, will be an offence. Most important ingredient is the sexual intent and not the skin-to-skin -skin contact of the child. Sexual intent is a question of fact which is to be determined from the attendant circumstances. Therefore, the act of touching the sexual part of the body or any other act involving physical contact, if done with sexual intent, would amount to sexual assault within the meaning of Section 7 of the POCSO Act. Rest Restricting the interpretation of the words touch or physical contact to skin-to-skin -skin contact would not only be a narrow interpretation of the provision contained in Section 7 of the POCSO Act, but it would lead to an absurd interpretation of the said provision. In the light of the aforediscussed discussed legal position, if the findings recorded by the High Court are appreciated, it clearly emerges that the High Court fell into error in case of the accused in holding the accused guilty for the minor offences under IPC and acquitting accused for the offence under Section 8 of the POCSO Act. The High Court, while specifically accepting the consistent versions of the victim and other witnesses, had committed gross error in holding that the alleged act of the accused would not fall in the definition of sexual assault and would fall within the definition of offence under IPC. 
the high court further erred in holding that there was no offense since there was no direct physical contact with sexual intent the interpretation of section 7 at the instance of high court on the premise of the principle of adjustum generis is also thoroughly misconceived it may be noted that the principle of adjustum generis should be applied only as an aid to the construction of the statute it should not be applied where it would defeat the very legislative intent the surrounding circumstances were proved by the prosecution rather said facts had remained unchallenged at the instance of the accused such basic facts having been proved by the prosecution the court was entitled to raise the statutory presumption about the culpable mental state of the accused as permitted to be raised under section 30 of the said act the said presumption has not been rebutted by the accused by proving that he had no such mental state the allegation of sexual intent as contemplated under section 7 of the act therefore had also stood proved by the prosecution the alleged acts of the accused having been held to be proved by the prosecution they would certainly be the acts falling within the purview of the sexual assault as contemplated in section 7 of pokso act this court therefore has no hesitation in holding that the accused had committed an offense of sexual assault within the meaning of section 7 of the pokso act Therefore, the judgment and orders passed by the Bombay High Court are hereby quashed and set aside, and the judgment and orders passed by the extra joint additional session judge and the special court are restored. Friends, to conclude, in this video, we have seen that the Supreme Court has observed that the main ingredient of the offense of sexual assault under Section 7 of the Pokso Act was sexual intent and not skin-to-skin -skin contact, while reversing the controversial Bombay High Court's judgment in a Pokso case as per Attorney General for India versus Sadish and another case. In the next video, I will see you with yet another case synopsis. Until then, I take leave of you. Bye.